Wait, this actually looks pretty good. I bought three film scanners, one for $5, one for $50, and one for $100. And in this video, we're gonna test them out, see if they're worth using it all, and see if I'm able to get some good results out of them. We should just break these things open, right? The Crosley Slide and Negative Scanner. Easily convert your negatives and slides to digital files with the touch of a button. Innovative technology, convert your dot 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 to JPEG. Negative slides, photos, business cards. It's probably a bad sign that it says it can scan other things other than negatives. It looks kind of cool, it's like a metal sort of box. Maybe it's fake, maybe it's plastic. The Minolta Revive 5. They made five of these? Digital film scanner, convert your slides and negatives to digital. It can do Super 8, 110, 35, 126, 110, those are slides, but it can also just do 126 and 35. Interesting. First up, we've got the Crosley Slide and Negative Scanner. If you know anything about Crosley, they make record players, and I've never seen a film scanner by them. I got this for $5. So we're just gonna pop this thing open and see if it's worth anything. Off to a bad start. It has an installation disc, which is already bad because I don't know if I'm gonna be installing any sort of software to any computer. USB cord. Wait, this thing might actually be kind of big. Oh, no, it's not. This is a 35 millimeter slide carrier. Got the 35 millimeter film carrier. And here is the scanner itself. The Crossley film scanner. It is hella small. I am excited to try this out. I'm gonna grab a computer. We've got the Crosley plugged into the computer. We've got the slide carriers here. I'm just gonna type in scanner, printers and scanners, and see if anything comes up. Oh God. I don't even think I'm gonna be able to get this to work with my computer. Oh my God, it's for f Windows XP. This scanner only works on Windows XP, so I'm gonna see if I can boot up a copy of Windows XP to use this thing. Please hold. I'm about 90% sure I have a virtual machine on my first laptop that I haven't booted up in probably two and a half years. So we might actually be in luck. I got the CD drive to put the software onto Windows XP and now I just gotta figure out how to install it properly. So I'm now borrowing Willem's Toshiba and I'm going to try to uh, install this Crosley software on this computer. It's almost been two full days of me trying to get this working and I finally have the software up on the screen on the second or third computer I've tried to get it to start up on. We're using a Windows 7 machine that Willem let me borrow. It's actually a Volvo like code reading Toshiba, but I mean, this is looking like some pretty basic software, but it's really cool how there's actually like a little thing of film on it. I think we should load some film in and see how it looks. So the photos we're scanning are of my friend Dan with his Azuzu Trooper back in North Carolina at like sunset. I have no idea if these are gonna look any good. Boom. Okay. Wait. This actually looks pretty good <laughs> compared to what I thought it was gonna look like. Okay, this scanner is not giving me any options for like color control or anything. I'm thinking that maybe if I use the slide feature on here, I can obviously capture positives of these negatives and then maybe edit them in Final Cut Pro and maybe they'll look good, but we'll just, we'll just have to see. The Crosley scan just right out of scanner is pretty rough, but as soon as you scan the negative as a slide, which is just pretty much scanning it without having any sort of internal conversion from the scanner and plug it into a software like Negative Lab Pro, which is a very nice tailored conversion software for your negatives, which allows you to tweak a bunch of different things. You can actually pull something really nice out of this $5 scanner, you know, relative to how good the quality is and stuff. It's still a very muddy, pixelated, little tiny digital image. It turns out pretty good, especially if you're able to tweak the colors to your liking. I've also included a lab scan, which was done on a Fuji Frontier, which is industry standard for a lot of people. Just so you can see how sharp it is in that you can actually see the grain on this version. Now I'm gonna still try to use the Crosley, but I'm gonna try to use 
some negatives that maybe are a little bit easier for it, some like real daylight stuff. I think that was kind of close to blue hour. I don't know why I'm always starting with hard negatives for scanners to pick up. All right, I've got some Cinestill 400D that I shot in Palm Springs, and I'm gonna do normal negative scans on the Crosley, and then I'm also gonna do slide scans so I can do some uh, conversions with Negative Lab Pro after the fact to see if we can get anything worth using out of this. First frame looking pretty good, not gonna lie. I am not at all surprised to inform you that there is a lot of inconsistency with this little scanner. It's pretty much just a little box with a tiny fixed macro lens that takes a super low resolution photo of each frame and converts it itself. But this time around, the conversion that the Crosley did was more accurate and easier to tweak than my Negative Lab Pro conversion, which I spent a lot of time trying to get right. I don't know why this is, but it's just an inconsistent little box, so <laughs> I don't have an explanation for that. This comparison is the tweaked Crosley scan versus a Fuji Frontier scanner. The colors actually look pretty good, but the image is pixelated, muddy, low res, and not sharp at all compared to the Frontier scan, of course. It's kind of an unfair comparison. We're on to the IT technology one, and you're not gonna believe this, but it also has a Windows XP or above CD that needs to get installed, so we're gonna do this and then get this one running. A newer version of this application is already installed on this computer. It uses the same software? Oh my God. <laughs> it's the same scanner in a different box, isn't it? They both say copy. They both use the exact same logos on the side for inserting your film. Naturally, I couldn't just plug it in and use it. I had to uninstall the newer version of the software and install the older version of the software for this version of the scanner. I'm thinking that these are kind of just the exact same scanner internally with slightly different externals. But the photos will let us know if that's true. It could just use the same software and have a slightly different end result. We will see. <laughs> like, this thing looks the exact same. I can't believe it. I'm not gonna lie y'all, once I figured out that they were the same scanner, I only scanned two frames on this one. The IT technology scanner looks different, can scan business cards and photos, but the actual part of the scanner that scans film is identical to the Crosley. Naturally, it doesn't give you the exact same end result. It's exactly as sharp, but it has so much more light hazing, like more light is bouncing into the scanner than the Crosley, which I find funny seeing as the Crosley was so much cheaper. It's just, it's the same scanner, rebranded. Crosley definitely didn't produce this scanner, they just labeled it with their name, or somebody bought the rights to the Crosley brand. Okay, now that we've determined that these are the exact same scanners, we're just gonna get out our $100 scanner that has its own screen, you put an SD card in it, I think it's gonna be very different. <laughs> oh my god. Last up, we've got the Minolta Revive 5 High Resolution Film to Digital Converter. Also, this scanner does Super 8, so I'm really excited to try that out. This thing actually looks pretty sweet. Not gonna lie to you. It's also tiny, very light. Oh, wow. All the different film carriers. Yes! <laughs> it's working, it's working, it's working. 135, all right, we're ready to go. Whoa, this screen looks hella reactive. Oh, that's way better, I think. Sometimes these actually look really nice, like, like it has a sharp sensor or something. Maybe it's just the LCD screen. Slot and you just slide it through, okay? Not bad. I'm kind of interested to compare these because they actually look pretty good on the screen. I don't know how to describe it. This scanner is definitely the sharpest, fastest to use, and easiest to use with the fact that you don't have to connect it to an old operating system. But I will have to say, I turned off the scanner and rescanned the images a couple minutes later and got completely different results. And sometimes the Negative Lab Pro scans came out gorgeous with almost what looks like a layer of grain that the scanner added itself. And sometimes the Negative Lab Pro scans didn't come out so great. Almost impossible to get looking good. I'm pretty impressed so far by this scanner. It's definitely a step past the $5 and the $50 scanner, which were pretty much the same device in a different box. Now you can't quite see like grain structure or anything on these scans. It's still pretty low resolution, but for the price point and compared to what we were just looking at, it's actually like decent. I still wouldn't recommend getting it. I think we should just try out Super 8 because I've been kind of excited to see how that turns out, what that looks like. Yeah, I'm excited. This is the 35 millimeter carrier and this is like the Super 8 thing and you literally just put it in there like that. <laughs> it can't scan Super 8. 
it can take photos of each frame at like a minuscule, I couldn't even get the film to show up on the screen. <laughs> like it's, it's too bright or something. Convert slides and negatives to digital, that is true. Convert your old 35 millimeter 126, 110, super eight and eight millimeter film negatives and slides to JPEG digital images. That's on me. I don't know why I thought it would be able to scan Super 8 for $80. It is safe to say that all three of these scanners I don't recommend buying. I'm pretty impressed at all three scanners' ability to take a very low resolution JPEG and actually make something decent out of it. Despite the fact that two of these scanners are pretty much the same thing in a different box, these are like new old stock, old scanners from like the early 2000s that were probably just on the shelves and like, targets and Walmarts and stuff. If you needed to digitize some of your photos and you're not looking for any sort of artistic approach with film photography, you would probably grab these to scan some like family negatives or slides or something, just so you have a digital copy. And then this same story here, but I wish I paid more attention to the fact that when it said Super 8, it was kind of just saying it can attempt to capture one single frame of Super 8 as an image. It was pretty interesting doing a Negative Lab Pro conversion. So scanning your negatives as positives in the software and then taking them into Lightroom and converting them with Negative Lab Pro to the final image. I think that was like a fun approach on trying to get these images to be usable at all beyond what the software they came with allowed them to be. And honestly, these are just good examples of how good conversion software is these days. Now imagine converting and editing an image that's not a one megabyte JPEG, but is a 50 megabyte TIFF. The amount of control and sharpness that you can get out of negatives is pretty astounding with the right scanner. So this just shows you that if you're scanning at home, maybe try something like Negative Lab Pro with a camera scanning setup, a flatbed, a plus tech, something nicer. I'm still glad I did a video on them because it's kind of crazy when you get on these sites like Amazon, you see all of these random little scanners and you have no idea what sort of quality that they can put out. And for the most part, they aren't putting out very much. So stick to your camera scanning, stick to your plus techs, whatever you have at home. Anyway, that was this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Join me next week for something new. Bye. I wonder if I can return these.